As an event planner, producer, or coordinator, these are some things that you need to know about producing virtual events. I'm Georgie from GSD Solution, and we have years of experience producing virtual, hybrid, and in-person events. So I'm gonna share the real behind the scenes with you. First up, have a contingency plan. I'm gonna say that twice <laughs> because you probably need more than one. Have a contingency plan. Wi-Fi could go out. Technology could break. Camera not working the day of, even though you tested it five times, right? Electricity goes out. There's a storm in the area and the list goes on and on and on and on. So having a contingency, or let me give you my favorite one. The platform has an outage during the event and or you have too many attendees coming on and the platform crashes, right? <laughs> Good problems bad problems at the same time. So in that case, you need a contingency plan. So a contingency plan is essentially a plan B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Creating a backup plan to what happens if this breaks? What happens if this does not work? And with a contingency plan, you have to also have a chain of action and a chain of authority. Who says yes to the contingency plan? At, do you as the virtual event producer uh, automatically enact the contingency plan immediately if X thing breaks? Or is it only if three things break, we then move to con the contingency plan? So what, call, what set of activities causes us to act on the contingency plan and how we act on the contingency, contingency plan and where to find it, right? So just having that set up. So you have a contingency and then a contingency to the contingency. First and foremost, backup plans are a must. Secondly, virtual events, come here, come on, let's get a little closer, are just as stressful as in-person events, or better yet, they can be. So there are a lot of benefits, and I have a video talking about that too, a lot of benefits to doing virtual events. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't do virtual events, none at all. There are a lot of benefits to doing virtual events, but at the same time, People expect, or people sometimes come into virtual events with the expectation that they're gonna be so light and so easy and so <laughs> less stressed than uh, in-person events. And that's just not the case. I'm telling you for real, that is not the case. They can be just as stressful and sometimes more depending on the type of event, the client that you're working with, the expected outcomes, and then the platform that you're using. So uh, we worked with clients that wanted to bring their own platform and the platform was so complicated. And I'm just like, why is it this complicated? All you need is, all you're doing is a 30 minute panel. Like why are we setting up 17 things for that? And I've had the opposite effect where it's a 30 minute panel, boom, 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 we're in and out and, and it feels like magic, right? And so these are some factors that can impact the complexity of the event. So be conscious of that. If you go into it expecting it to be super easy, one, two, three, every single time, and it doesn't happen, that will actually increase your level of frustration. So but going into it with the consciousness that this can potentially be as hard or harder than the in-person version of this type of event, lets you set yourself up for success in a better way because then you're thinking ahead. You're making more contingency. You're thinking of how can we um, make this work for us? Or maybe we don't need this complicated of a solution, right? You're thinking outside of the box because you're prepared for what could happen. So the majority of the time, virtual events will be a lot less stress and a lot less set up than an in-person event, but recognize that that space does exist where it can be harder. Okay, um, the next thing, right? One of my favorite things, it's a good one. ROI is higher. So return on investment is oftentimes higher when you're doing a virtual event, right? So definitely know that. Um, and so, you know, be prepared for your client or your team to ask you to do more virtual events because it may have taken less stress, a lot less um, heavy lifting, right? Or a lot less financial cost than the in-person event did. And are you prepared for that capacity? So making sure you have a tech support team, and that's one of the things my company, GSD Solutions, offers. Because um, what we saw before, during, and even after the pandemic is once a person at a virtual event, they're like, oh, can we do seven more, you know, once a month now, right? Instead of once a quarter. And they're like, whoa, 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 buddy, how do we do that? And so we come in and help our clients to make sure that they can keep up with that capacity or the demand for more virtual 
events from their audience um, or their stakeholders, right? Who's whoever, whoever cutting that check, right? And the last thing I'll say, right, that every virtual event or every person that's trying to produce virtual events should know is that not every type of event should be virtual. I'm gonna say that straight up and down. And as a person that <laughs> makes a living off of producing virtual events, I'm gonna tell you the truth. And so certain type of events, they are 100% better in person. Um, the experience is gonna go down, you're gonna be fighting, going so much against the grain to try to get attendance, to try to get participation if you do it virtually, that honestly it's not worth it in the end. So being able to discern what types of events work virtually and how you're going to convert a type of in-person event to virtual so that way you keep the high impact for the audience is key and we have an ebook that we use called beyond a webinar um we're going to link it below that helps people think through what are the components of my event should it be in person should it be virtual what pieces do i need to have it be virtual and have it be successful virtually so to recap right uh, virtual events can be just as stressful, if not more than in-person events. So be mindful of that, making sure that you have contingency plans when you're doing the virtual events, the ROI may be higher than an in-person event. So be aware that your team and your stakeholders might want more. And then lastly, not every event can be converted into a virtual event. And some ones are just better suited to be in person. If you're doing a small dinner, don't do, you know, a 12 person dinner, you're not going to do a virtual event. It's possible. It can work, but that type of experience is best suited for in-person. You know, it does increase intimacy, the, the uh, conversions, right? So depending on what type of events you're doing, what industry you're in, what vertical you're in, um, you know, you want to understand it to, th you know, from start to finish and then determine if you are doing it virtually for a specific reason, such as the participants are in 12 different countries, 12 different cities across the world, yes, virtual dinner. But if everyone's in the same geographical location and can commute to that place, just do it in person. Um, you, you know, your ROI will be higher there. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you ever need any support with virtual, hybrid, or in-person event tech support, reach out to us. Um, you know, schedule a consultation. We'll get on the phone. We'll chat for a little bit, brainstorm with you. And if we're a good fit, send you a quote so how we can work with you. But in the meantime, if you got some value from this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.